Hello everybody, this is Brian Garvin from Oceanside, California, and today is going to be a very exciting video I'm making on Bitcoin and um, at least eight reasons why you should seriously consider uh, buying some if you haven't already. And if you have um, already, consider stacking a little bit more. Um, first, I need to start with a legal disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I care to be. This is not financial advice. This video is for informational, education, and entertainment purposes only. Um, everybody, including myself, is responsible for making our own investment decisions. Okay, so this video is going to highlight, like I said, eight reasons why you should own Bitcoin. I mean, if you're not into Bitcoin, you're, you're going to miss out on the biggest transfer of general... Uh, the biggest transfer of multi-generational wealth there, there ever will be in our lifetime. So this is this literally is the opportunity of a lifetime. Okay, so the first reason is Bitcoin spot ETFs. You probably already know that BlackRock and Fidelity are the two major players in this space. Um, spot ETFs were approved on January 8th, for those of you that don't know. At the current rate, BlackRock is buying Bitcoin. They're going to own 1 million. You probably don't know this. This is why I'm telling you. They're going to they're going to own 1 million Bitcoin um, by November 2024. Okay, so that means in about what March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, eight months is not that long, and they're going to own a million Bitcoin. That that's going to really really cause a crazy supply shock, and that's just one company, BlackRock. I'm not talking about Fidelity. ARK Investments, Invesco, and, and these other ones that are offering it. Um, so you, the, you know, you could just imagine what's going to happen there. And and um, right now they're currently buying ten to thirteen times the current supply. So right now there's supposed to be nine hundred Bitcoin being mined a day. And I'm going to go over mining a little later in this video, and you're going to find out that just because there's nine hundred a day that are being mined doesn't mean nine hundred is being released to the public. I'm, I'm going to you don't. You probably don't know this already, but I'm going to explain that to you in more detail. Um, but anyway, so and another thing to know about BlackRock is they've been in the crypto space since 2018. You can even research it yourself and find out. Um, right now, BlackRock uh, owns 18 billion dollars in Bitcoin. Fidelity owns 10 billion dollars in Bitcoin, and Ark Investments and Bitwise collectively own over five billion dollars of Bitcoin. So that's what 28, 33 billion. And this just, most of this just happened since, you know, probably December or January of this year. You can imagine looking at their wallet size. Um, but let's take ETFs a couple steps further because there's more to it than just that. First of all, the one thing that, that you, you probably don't understand about these ETFs is there's only a 1% to 3% allocation to Bitcoin right now. Okay, that, that sounds great. You know, um, it's getting millions and millions of people involved in Bitcoin and that's awesome. But in the future, what's going to happen is they're going to increase. Once Bitcoin's more of a trusted asset, it's 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 gaining trust as we speak. It's going to their allocation might not just be one to three percent. You might have an option of four percent down the road, and this could be a year or so or whatever. I don't know, but it, eventually it's going to be a four percent allocation. You're going to have an option for a five percent allocation, and eventually it can even go up to ten percent allocation just for an ETF. Um, now, on a personal level, I recommend you go to a, a, legit, a legitimate U.S. exchange, like if you're in the U.S. or, or um, like Coinbase or Kraken in, in, in one of those places and, and buy Bitcoin there. Um, Coinbase is probably your best bet. Um, the other thing I want to say about it is, let me see here. Oh, derivatives are ancillary to ETFs. And, and um, they haven't even been, I mean, it's going to be four to six years down the road before derivatives get into the picture. And they're a, they're a quadrillion dollar industry. If you don't have any idea how much a quadrillion is, a quadrillion is a million billion, basically, or a thousand trillion. You know, just, uh, just imagine a trillion and then times a thousand. I mean, it's just a crazy amount of money and th that's the market for derivatives. Um, and the other thing too is it's you're going to eventually be able to trade options on Bitcoin as well. I don't think we're there yet, but I think we're going to get there within about maybe six months to a year. So all these things that are behind the scenes that are works in progress, you don't know about, but they're happening. Um, people are thinking about it. They're planning for it. Um, you know, so so that's just something good to know. Um, now, you know, just, you know, imagine the supply shock that all these events are going to take before 
you know, for 2024. And, and as you probably already know, we're only two weeks away from the halving event that's going to happen around April 20th of this year. And when that happens, um, the Bitcoin being mined is limited. It's written in the hard code of Bitcoin that you can only mine 450 Bitcoin a day. You can't do any more than that. You can't release any more than that. And that's going to cause even more of a supply shock. And, and, and just so you'll know, you know, if it happens on April 20th, on April 21st or 22nd, the price isn't just going to immediately burst up. It could take maybe two to three months for this shock effect to come into play to where it really catches on and then and then it'll just go crazy up. Um, that's At least that's what I believe. I don't think it, it's going to happen the next day, but it will happen within a few months. So I'm thinking like July or August, this thing's going to take off like a bat out of you know what. Um, so right now, Grayscale still owns 322,000 um, Bitcoin. I'm going to kind of tell you where things are at. And this is what caused the market uh, dip is so many Grayscale outflows. Everything on, when it comes to Bitcoin is, is you know, it, whether it increases or de decreases is due to outflows and inflows. And Grayscale, for whatever crazy reason, they're selling tons and tons and tons of Bitcoin on the market. And they've been doing it since the ETF approval on uh, January um, 8th. And that's why the price has went up some. I think it was like around 40 something thousand when, when they approved the ETF and now it's like close to 70 thousand, which is great, but it could have been a lot more if Grayscale didn't have these tons of outflows. Um, and, and the G, 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 uh, GTBC, if they keep doing outflows at July 5th, they're gonna completely run out of Bitcoin. They'll literally have none left based on their current you know, selling rate. So you don't have to worry about it too much longer. We're already in April. May, June, July, less than three months, they're going to be completely out of Bitcoin if they keep, you know, selling and selling and selling. Why are they selling all their Bitcoin when it's going to be such a, a high value asset in the future? That That's a question I just can't answer because I know you're probably going to ask that in the comments and I, I don't have an answer. Why? I mean, I, I think the game would be the way BlackRock's pl uh, playing it and, and, and Michael Saylor and some others and just accumulate as much as you can. So I really don't have an answer. Um, but once they're completely wiped out of bitcoin they're not even going to be in they're not even going to be a discussion in bitcoin anymore because they're going to be completely out unless they buy and i don't know why they would buy at a higher price when they're selling it i don't know so i don't know if they're trying to uh i know they went to court to get approval for it so i don't know if they're paying back investors or what they're doing with that money but um right now uh how am I going to say, like, um, Grayscale is getting larried in the worst way. When I say getting larried, what I mean is Larry Fink is the um, CEO of uh, BlackRock. And getting larried means he's going to buy all the Bitcoin he can. That's his game. He wants to buy as much as he can. And if they ever get the spot Ethereum ETF approved, he's going to buy as much of that as he can, too. Um, they're, they're, they manage uh, over a trillion in assets. And um, I know the company is a multi multi billion dollar company, and um, that's their game. They want to they want to take over crypto. So as far as I'm concerned, that's what it seems like. Um, so you know, the, that's the second reason is, is grayscale dumping, and they're going to be done July fifth. That's that's reason number two. You want to own Bitcoin. Reason number three is countries, governments, central banks, and large corporations will all be coming into Bitcoin. In the next few years, like I said, these are things. This is where you have to think in the future and use common sense and, and think we're early. Everybody says we're late. Oh gosh, it's seventy grand. I can't afford it. You don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. I mean, you can own point one Bitcoin and completely change your family's life forever, or at least your life. You know, so take some personal responsibility and buy some Bitcoin. I'm going to get more into that at the end of the video. Um, once again, that's not a recommendation. That's just what I plan on doing. Okay. Right now, El Salvador is involved, and I think Venezuela is going to be next. They're, I know they're talking about doing it. And there's tons of other countries that are going to eventually FOMO into Bitcoin, not now, but in the next couple of years, because the more countries that use it and they realize it's working for them, the more countries are going to want to do it. Um, so government adoption, like I said, it's going to be pretty slow, but they will have a come around. And, and when they do come around, it's going to be significant. Um, just some of these, you know, larger companies like England and Germany and, you know, places like that. I mean, I mean, they could, they could really drive the price up. Uh, you know, Bitcoin's a limited asset. It's technically it's 21 um, million coins will ever be available. That's nothing. There's 40 million millionaires in the world. 
there's not even enough for one Bitcoin per millionaire. Um, so uh, some, you know, like um, some of this stuff the media is talking about, and it might be in print, but it's not making the front headlines. So your mass majority of people aren't really reading about it and understanding what's going on with Bitcoin. Um, you know, even though these countries are slowly starting to adopt it, there's a com there's a Samson Mo. I don't know if you know him, but he's trying to personally call every government in the world and, and trying to get them into Bitcoin. So there are people right now that are contacting these governments, but it's going to be slow. It's not going. It might take three to five years to get even thirty or forty countries on board. It's not going to be overnight, but over time, a majority of the people can be involved. A majority of the countries in the world could be involved in Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, a lot of people don't pay attention to the fact that the media prints stuff and people just don't read it. So that's why adoption is slow in certain areas. Um, that, here's number the fourth reason that you should consider buying Bitcoin, because right now Hong Kong has 31 spot Bitcoin ETF applications in for Bitcoin. Um, these are eventually, they might have to go to court and they might have some run around or whatever, but eventually they're going to be approved or most of them are going to be approved. Um, once this happens, there's going to be a lot more cryptocurrency activity in Asia in general, because once Hong Kong comes in, a lot of other Asian countries are going to get excited about coming in too. So the re fifth reason that Bitcoin is such a powerful asset and is retail FOMO. Okay, that's retail people are, it's just another way of saying people like you and me, working staffs, people that can maybe afford 500 a month, some can afford three grand a month, doctors might be able to put five grand a month in there. You know, that, those are retailers, you know, people, just j average working people, which can include engineers, accountants, or whatever. Um, once Bitcoin reaches $100,000, a lot of people like us um, are gonna be entering Bitcoin. Um, like I said, it, it also includes professionals. Um, that and some of these people are going to be coming in with hundreds of thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and maybe a, a thirty-year retired dentist might see the true potential in Bitcoin and, and, and want to move money around the rest of his life, and he might put a f two or three million, excuse me, two or three million in. I mean, that's the kind of mass adoption I'm talking about on the retail side, and and, and people are are aware but they're not really aware yet because it's going to take about a year or two of these um, ETFs for people to really start catching on. Um, it just doesn't happen overnight but it's something to look forward to in the future. Um, that's why it's so important you get it now so you get in before all this stuff goes on. Um, anyway, so right now they're realizing a lot of these people are going to realize that they're missing out, they're going to get pissed off and they're going to put some money in Bitcoin. Um, you know, eventually you're going to be in a situation where, you know, 20 years from now where Bitcoin's $5 million and someone's going to spend, you know, $300 for probably, you know, 4,000 Satoshis, which is, you know, just not that many. And they're going to be happy because they have Bitcoin because it's an alternative asset. It's a store of value and it, it's reliable. Um, Bitcoin has never crashed yet. I mean projects around Bitcoin, like exchanges and things like that have crashed, but Bitcoin itself, the network itself has, has never, you know, crashed. It's unhackable. It's, it's un, I mean, it's here to stay. Um, and that's why Black Mark and these other companies are adopting it. So think about the millennials and Generation Zers. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm semi-retired. I really don't have to work unless I want to work. Um, but there's so many people out there that are like in their 20s and 30s or they're teenagers and they have a whole working career ahead of them. So why wouldn't they wanna buy at least, you know, 0.1 Bitcoin, which is a 10th of a Bitcoin, they can do it for like seven grand and they could DCA and do it, maybe put $300 a month in there for two years. And, and, and if they if it goes up to 200,000, so what? They Even if you own 0.8 of Bitcoin instead of, uh, 0.08 Bitcoin instead of 0.1, that's still pretty darn good. Um, so anyway, so, and the other thing too, let's talk about the crypto whales. You got Mr. 100, you got Michael Saylor, you got the Winklevoss twins. Um, they're from the movie, The Social Network with Mark Zuckerberg. Um, they, they, they're totally into Bitcoin. They, they, I mean, they're totally into cryptocurrency. They love it. They all, they ran, they, they started like, I don't know, a dozen or more businesses just based around crypto. Um, you got Tim Draper, you got Mike Novogratz, you got Jeff Bezos, which bought, I think, $7.5 million, uh, $7 billion of Bitcoin, as far as I know. Um, he might be Mr. 100, I don't know. 
Um, they, a lot of people think he could be, um, but he's never publicly disclosed it. You've got Je Jed McCaleb, Jack Dorsey, which he, he's one of those guys that um, he has a bunch of crypto apps on his phone. And what he does is he buys the maximum amount that will allow him to spend per day for all the crypto apps. So I don't know what that is, 15, 20,000 a day or something, but he's really loaded. He's really loading up. Um, you've got, and you've got Mark Cuban. He, he's a, a big believer in Ethereum, but he also owns Bitcoin. Um, but he's also a believer in, in, in some of these other solid projects out there, crypto projects. So, you know, and this doesn't, I'm not even talking about the people in the top 1%, people with network worth on the low end of 11 million up to a billion. In the, in the U.S., in order to be in the top 1%, I think you have to be worth close to $11 uh, million. Um, then you could say you're a top 1%er. But, you know, these guys are going to be coming in too. And, and I would say most of them don't even know about crypto yet. Or they're just, I don't know why they don't know. Because you would think they'd be sharp enough to know before even I did. But who knows? I don't have an answer to that because it just doesn't make sense. Um, so... Right now, BlackRock is calling all their clients that are worth $36 million or more and trying to get them to buy into their Bitcoin ETF. Um, but it's only a 1% to 3% allocation, but but it's, gonna, but it's gonna add up quick because these guys have real money. Um, so, and, and remember I told you before, the allocation amounts can go up to four or five or even 10%. So think about that. So number seven is there's a company called Hut8, H-E-T-8, and, and they're one of the biggest Bitcoin, well, they're the biggest Bitcoin uh, marketing company in the United States. And I'm about to get to what I was gonna tell you earlier. Um, regular sized banks and large investment banks around the world have been uh, contacting this company personally and wanting to buy Bitcoin. And the reason they don't buy it off an exchange like Coinbase or Kraken or whatever, because once you get into the mega millions when you're trying to buy Bitcoin or billions or whatever, it's not like most things when you buy a lot, you get, a, you get a discount. This is actually the opposite. When you try to buy Coinbase after a certain amount, they actually charge you more, not less. Because Bitcoin, I guess it's because Bitcoin is such a scarce asset. So what, what these companies are doing is they're trying to cut out the middleman, the exchanges, and going right to the mining companies and say, hey, I'd like to buy you know $700 million of Bitcoin off you or whatever. And what, and, and, and see the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin uh, miners have to sell a certain percentage to pay for their electricity fees to mine the Bitcoin. And I'm going to get into that soon. Um, a big conception of, of miners is that they sell off all their Bitcoin. Um, this isn't true because it takes a lot of energy to mine one Bitcoin. What they do is they sell enough to keep operating. Um, and then a lot of that, a lot of the profits that they mine, let's, let's say for example, they get a good deal on Bitcoin and it costs them $20,000 to mine a Bitcoin that's worth $70,000. I, I mean, th those are some of the figures I've researched on the internet. It used to be up to 40,000, but they're starting to get better deals on electricity and, and that sort of thing. Um, so it costs them 20,000, so that's 50,000 in profit. So what, what, what these miners are starting to do is they're getting smart. They're gonna say, well, we're not gonna, we're not gonna sell all of our profits in, in market price because we, we want to benefit from the 20, 30, 40, 50 X that Bitcoin's going to do down the road. We're not just going to go ahead and uh, sell it to another company. I mean, and let them take all the profits. I mean, that's why we're in the business in the first place. So we can make a ton of money. And so that's what they're doing. They're not selling to the banks, but they, they are selling enough to, to pay their, their electricity fees, right? Which is, like I said, about 20 to 40,000 of Bitcoin. What, and then, but the profits they want to keep. They're not selling, they might sell a little bit of their profits, but they're not gonna sell most of them. And, and, and that's the big misconception about mining is that they're willing to just sell all their, all their Bitcoin, uh, uh, you know, what they made in net profit. They're not willing to do that. And this is great news for the industry because it just proves that, that that's a scarce asset and, and everyone's gonna fight for their you know, share of Bitcoin. Um, so, so, yeah, so what I want, uh, the reason number eight, um, so the mining companies is reason number seven. Reason number eight is we all know about the U.S. government overprinting fiat currency. Um, it, it's been going on for many years, um, but it seems to be getting worse and worse. Um, 
right now the country, the United States, is 34 trillion in debt, and just the interest on that debt is one trillion a year. And the, the way the government solves problems when they get in a bind is they print more money. Um, you can't print more Bitcoin. It's a scarce asset. It's written in the code. You can only have 20 million Bitcoin. Now, if you consider lost keys, deaths, um, people that, you know, lost keys and deaths are the two main reasons, you know, you're probably down to about maybe 17 uh, million Bitcoin that are really there. I mean, other than that, that's it. So, um, yeah, so I don't really see how we're ever going to be able to pay this this debt back. You know, I mean, I'm talking about fiat debt, the 34 trillion. We're, this is going to cause, I think, a lot of people in the next few years. I mean, even now it's doing it. Um, it it's causing me to do it now. It's going to cause a lot more people in the next few years to switch over to an alternative asset class that's more promising, more accountable. Um, you, you just can't you just can't break the Bitcoin network. It's never been done. So you know, that's that's really what people are going to want. They're going to want something fair, legit. Um, you can't go in debt in Bitcoin. Well, I guess you can if you do it through a private company and get a loan or something. But Bitcoin itself, you either own it or you don't. You know, there's when you transfer it, you transfer it out at market price. You know, so you're not going to really go in debt. Um, so let me tell you the main lessons to be learned from this video. Um, my number one word is focus. In other words, take accountability for your financial life. Use this as an opportunity to pay off all your bills in the future and, and, and just live the life you want comfortably. I, everybody has different goals. I'm not going to tell you to go out and get a Tesla or buy a $1.6 million home. I mean, everybody has different goals. I don't have those goals. I love where, the way I live right now. I'm already living the dream. I I have a pension from the uh, Marine Corps. It's it's 90%, but I get 100% pay. I'm TDIU, Total Disability Individual Unemployed Ability. It's, it's a it's just a type of program under the VA system. So I'm okay. I mean, I really don't. I mean, even if Bitcoin went to zero, I, I, I wouldn't be happy, but I would I would get by. You know, I can get, at least get my bills paid. But, you know, a lot of you, you have to look at Bitcoin as something that you put in and you don't touch for a long, long time. Maybe 8 to 12 years, I would say. Give it a chance to really grow. Um, you know, how important is that $35,000 car you're about to buy? How about that 10,000 vacation to France and Europe you wanted to do, 10 to 15,000? Is it is that important or would you rather, What do you, there's a word for it, but where you put off satisfaction for a while in order to live a better life in the future? There's a saying for it, but I don't remember it right now. But, you, but, but do everything you can to buy as much crypto assets as possible because this is real. I mean, crypto is going to be around for your kids. It's going to be around for your grandkids. I'm, if I'm speaking to somebody, you know, like a baby boomer, your kids are going to need it. Your grandkids are definitely going to need it because they're going to they're going to spend a whole career working for it or being involved in it somehow. They have to figure it out themselves or you could show them and make their life a lot easier. Um, so so once again, I talked about don't get Larry. Larry Fink from BlackRock will be happy to buy all the Bitcoin you sell if you decide to be a victim of volatility and freak out and panic and panic sell. He'll, he'll be happy to buy it from you at market price. Um, and you're going to lose out on your opportunity for multi-generational wealth, not just for you, but for your kids and your grandkids. Um, so don't let Wall Street and the other big boys uh, steal your share of life-changing uh, wealth that Bitcoin offers. This is very important. It's only two weeks before the major catalyst for Bitcoin price appreciation arrives, which is the Bitcoin having around April 20th, like I mentioned before. Um, continue to DCA dollar cost average and HODL. Life-changing wealth is here, still ready for you to take advantage of, and it's right around the corner. The, the uh, parabolic phase is just a few months away. Um, even if you, I mean, if you're totally broke, but you're working and, and, and you adjust your lifestyle and do everything you can, cut out your cable service or something, and you can put 300 a month into Bitcoin just for just a year, that's $3,600 over a year. That's like a, not a 0.1, but like a 0 0.05 Bitcoin at the price it is now. That can actually amount to something in 10 to 20 years, but you would hodl it, you wouldn't touch it. Uh, if you have any intention of taking it out, you just don't, or you're gonna lose you're gonna lose your your chance of doing anything with Bitcoin. But but that that's what I would suggest if you have literally nothing to work with. 
a lot of you guys that I'm talking to are probably make more than I do monthly because you have a maybe you're, you're a nurse or something. You're making eighty grand a year. You know, I mean, just just whatever you do, don't miss this opportunity. That's all I'm saying. Um, you know, e some experts are talking about Bitcoin reaching upwards of five million per coin in the next ten to twenty years. This isn't going to happen this cycle. It, 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 you know, five million probably won't happen on the next cycle, but on the third cycle, it could happen because there's going to be so much mass adoption and all for all the reasons I explained above. Um, so, um, and, and like I mentioned before, if you buy 0.1 Bitcoin, that would be $7,000 and you'll have something significant to pass on to your family. And this $7,000 investment um, could easily turn into about a half a million dollars within 10 to 20 years. Now, a half a million dollars isn't gonna buy you a yacht or a big giant fancy house, but if you're humble, you could just take you know two or three grand a month out of that for many, you know decades, and it'll make your life a lot easier. You know, so many people go bankrupt. You know, the average person goes bankrupt because they, if they only had two or three hundred dollars a month more, they wouldn't have had to file bankruptcy. See, I've been researching a lot of stuff for a long time, and it, I, now's my finally a chance to share some of that with you. So that's about it for this video. Um, I think you get the idea, uh, and just remember. This is life-changing wealth. Don't pass it up and don't get larried. Okay, if you learned anything from this video, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the notification bell so you can get automated follow-ups for all the future videos I create. Um, every time I release a new video. So also consider liking it and leaving a comment. Your comments will always generate interesting dialogue and I'm always open to answer your questions. Uh, thanks for watching again and uh, I'll be in touch very soon. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.